Hey y'all, I am uh, talking to you from the beautiful Grand Hyatt here in Tokyo, Japan. Um, but I wasn't always here at this um, place during my entire stay. It does take a lot of Hyatt points to get to stay here for free. Uh, so before I was here, I was actually at a, a strange little capsule hotel. These hotels are kind of uh, famous throughout Japan, super, super, super cheap. And um, that's kind of the allure of them. They're more just like a little capsule, like a little pod to sleep in um, because you're out enjoying Japan all day or business people may get stuck after work and miss the next train and it's a place to rest before getting back to work the next day, something like that. So um, it was certainly different from any hotel I've ever been to, and I wanted to talk to you about it now here in the lap of luxury while having some green tea in my uh, lovely deluxe room on the, on the um, executive club floor. <laughs> so yeah, it was super, super cheap. I got the room for free using my um, Capital One uh, Venture X rewards. So, um, and even then it was only like 2,000 miles, which is like 20 bucks or something like that. Uh, so very, very, very inexpensive. Um, but I had a feeling that my expectations shouldn't be too high because it might be, uh, there might be a reason that it's so cheap. And of course there was. The place I went to was called the um, Ueno Station Hostel. Oriental number two. Um, it is for men only, and um, it's a teeny tiny little building uh, sandwiched between many other buildings um, in the middle of, um, right next to sort of a, a station, the Ueno uh, metro station. So I went in there. First thing you do is they make you take your shoes off. You know, that's kind of a big thing here. I think it's personally gross. I don't like walking around where other people are walking around. I just think my poor socks are just getting dirty. But whatever, people seem to like that here. Um, but yeah, it was awful. I had to take off my, uh, my New Balance shoes and put them in this little locker, my poor shoes. Uh, who knows how many other um, shoes have been in that locker. It's kind of scary. Um, but anyway, so I did that. And then um, they checked me in. From there, I, I, um, I went to go and uh, take a look at my little capsule. There's also a little locker. And so I put, um, I was surprised that my um, little suitcase fit in there, but it did. And then I had to change into these um, standard issue little orange outfits that, I don't know, they, were kind of awful. They, I mean, they look like uh, the Dalai Lama's robe mixed with capri pants. I, I don't even know. Um, so they didn't want anyone walking around in their own clothes. So um, you had to wear this outfit. So you change into that. And then from there, I went to go look at my um, little capsule, my little room. Now I had the premium room. Uh, so it wasn't a an actual capsule capsule, like the little coffin-like ones that a lot of people have. Um, but um, it was still, you know, not a real room or anything like that. So it had a door that opened up, kind of like a barn door. And then um, it, it had walls, wooden walls, but it had no like, but they didn't go all the way to the top. So it was kind of like a, an upside down uh, bathroom stall or something, and about the same size too. Um, on the floor, there was like this little padding, I guess that was just, you know, there was no bed. It was just that pad. That's what you sleep on. Um, you know, it's kind of a lot of people in Japan do sleep on the floor, so it's not that unusual. Um, then also it, the door did lock and I think that they don't get that in the other capsules, but they, they just have a little curtain, but at least here the door did lock, um, then it had a little alcove kind of thing um, that you could sort of make into a makeshift table. And I did, I, I, you know, I got a little beer, a non-alcoholic beer from the 7-Eleven next door and 
enjoyed it in my room, in the privacy of the room. And um, there was also a charger, you know, for your phone or computer or whatever. Um, but as for the computer, there was a sign that said, um, here's the Wi-Fi, and it said which Wi-Fi to use, but the password was in Japanese, and I can't speak Japanese, so I didn't know what the password was, so I had no Wi-Fi. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, in the room, though, I did have this big TV, and it kind of swiveled around so you could watch it from bed, and it had a little headphones next to it so that it wouldn't disturb anyone, so it was nice to have a, a big TV and, um, you know, watch some of those crazy um, Japanese TV shows. And, um, yeah, and then there was a pillow and a sheet, and that's it. Um, there were kind of blankets that were nearby, near to the other cabins, but it got so hot that there, you didn't really need them. Um, then I looked more around the, um, the hotel. There is a, a common area where you could... Um, Sort of, a lot of people were relaxing on these um, sort of reclining chairs that had little TVs affixed to them. Or, and they also had some vending machines. You know, I got some water there and um, a little coffee for the, for the morning after, for when I woke up. And so, yeah, it was, it was kind of a nice little common area. There were a lot of manga or anime books there. I guess that's popular here. Um, not my cup of tea. Uh, speaking of tea, this tea is delicious here at the Hyatt. So I saw that common area. Then there was another common area, and it was like a bathhouse. Um, it was kind of scary to me. Um, it had this huge, like, pool that was heated. Um, but it was all, like, you know, common and out in the open, and everyone was, like, running around naked, and it was just, like, um, scary. Um, so they would go into that place to, I guess, relax, but it wasn't, I mean, it had the feeling of an, of a so-called onsen, but it wasn't a true onsen because it was like in the third floor of some building and it had, you know, it, it didn't have those Japanese, um, sulfur waters or whatever they have in those actual onsen areas. So from there, um, and next to it, they had this like sort of troughs where you sit on a bucket and hose yourself down and that's how you take a shower, which I just thought was like kind of humiliating and, and kind of gross. And um, then next to that, they had this room with like um, lo lots of sinks in a row and I guess that was where you would groom. They, they did give you free um, toothbrushes and razors and you know hair um, supplies and things like that. So it was pretty nice there. But then, you know, so that was the whole place. That was it. Um, uh, so then I, you know, I tried to, to sleep that night, and it was hard, especially with the jet lag and everything like that. Um, and, you know, you can just hear everyone snoring around you, and you're sleeping on the floor, and it's just, um, if you're not used to that, it, it can be tricky, especially if you're just a tourist traveling from the U.S., and so, I don't know. I thought it was um, quite the experience. It was a little unusual. Also, I felt like some of the... I had heard that uh, some foreigners aren't always exactly welcome here. Uh, most people have been very, very sweet and nice in Japan, but when you're in a small environment like that, uh, sometimes things are a little different. Like, uh, there were a few people who were just, like, staring at me um, and uh, with like these dead shark eyes and I didn't know what that meant. They just like look at you and they don't say anything, they don't do anything, it was just weird. And also when I, had, when I was at the front desk, um, I think I said something like domo arigato and I kind of did this little bow with, these, with this like prayer hands thing. I don't know what I was doing, um, but I was just, I was stressed and I was trying to check in and I didn't know what was going on and they had taken my shoes and um, well, after I said that, I went to like the elevator to go to leave and go and ex explore Japan. And I saw the front desk staff member talking to another front desk staff member. And they were kind of laughing and doing the same uh, hand motion that I had done. And I was like, are they, they're like just mocking me right in front of, <laughs> while I'm still here in the, in the vicinity. <laughs> but I mean, of course they know I don't speak Japanese. So it's like, you know, what am I going to do? So I don't know. It was just kind of funny. Um, but, you know, when I woke up, I had a little coffee there in, in the room that I got from the vending machine. 
and um, just sort of got out of there as quickly as I could. Uh, <laughs> um, tried to take a, sh a shower um, real quickly, super early before anyone else got there. And um, I was just so happy when I was out of there and I had my shoes back on and um, all was well with the, with the world again. Overall, I felt like the experience was kind of like what I would imagine prison to be like. Um, if you're a fan of uh, being forced to wear all orange and um, having no Wi-Fi and um, uh, bathing in com communal bathing troughs and, and then um, being locked away at night in a tiny cell but still being able to hear everyone snoring, then um, this or the prison life is perfect for you. Uh, for me, I much prefer this, and I don't think I'm ever going to do something like that ever again. But it was an experience, and I had it, and I can cross it off um, my list of things that I thought might be interesting to do, and um, things that were a little out of my comfort zone that I wouldn't normally do. Um, but, you know, I, I came to Japan to see different sides of the world and, and different ways of doing things. Um, some of them might be for me, and some of them not and some of them might not be. That one was definitely not for me. But um, I am loving this here. I have the view of the Tokyo Tower. I have some wonderful green tea. It's very relaxing. I'm very, very happy again. So anyway, um, I hope this video has been kind of informative. If you're interested in capsule hotels, um, maybe go there with um, very low expectations. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you at my next adventure. Thanks. Bye.